Hi everyone, this is Noelle at Petites. We're at our Bainbridge location today and we're gonna talk about hummingbirds. So uh, in the middle of June is pollinator week and so you wanna celebrate the butterflies and the hummingbirds. Um, try to plant as much as you can in the month of June and um, really enjoy them out in the garden. Same thing with uh, butterflies that I mentioned earlier. You want to plant early, mid, and late season bloomers in order to give a long blooming season and really nectar season uh, for the hummingbirds. So look for a variety of different plants, early, mid, and late blooming, and also look for plants that have a very tubular, um, shaped flower to them, maybe even a trumpet shape to them too, because the hummingbirds really do enjoy that. If you enjoy dark red colors, dark pig colors, magenta, that also brings the hummingbirds in. So if you plant a lot of those orangey red, dark pink colors, the hummingbirds will come towards that area and then they'll start looking for all of those tubular and of course trumpet shaped flowers. Right behind me is one of the most beautiful lilies. This is called ink. And this lily is, of course, that bright orange with that dark kind of purpley center. Fantastic for the hummingbirds. They really do enjoy the lily family. It could be a uh, oriental lily like this. It could also be a day lily. Um, it can be your repeat bloomers like Happy Returns. It could be a beautiful, real productive orange like Primal Scream. So any of those lilies, really look out for that. Another plant that does very, very well is the Lobelia family, and it's right by my shoulder here. The Lobelia are a little bit later season bloomer, but the foliage on this one, like Queen Victoria, is absolutely gorgeous, and it's a native in Ohio. So do try these plants. They're great for part shade areas as well along with, believe it or not, the hosta. Your hosta flowers are going to attract the hummingbirds into the shade garden. So try the lobelia, the hosta, and then also the coral bells. So coral bells nowadays have so many different foliage and flower colors, but really the bells are super attractive to them. Coral bells, many of them can grow in full sun to part shade, but to really increase your color in the shade, and of course your hummingbirds in the shade, try them, they love them. So even the light pink, all the way to the dark pink I have back here, which is that true coral bell. This one's on Hercules, and Taylor will have to take a picture of it for you. Hercules has a white and green mottled foliage, but bright coral bells on it. So it's really a cool variety. Other plants that work really well, the sage family. So this is a salvia, this is lyrical rose salvia, but our meadow sage family, um, really, it, you don't have to stick with just meadow sage. They come in purple, they come in white, they come in rose, but you can go with Russian sage, which is a little bit later bloomer. You could even go with some of your um, herbal sages as well. Pineapple sage is fantastic. It, it produces green foliage that's real lemony pineapple smelling, but then it produces these bright red flowers towards the end of summer. So that's a great one too. Another plant that works really well is the um, bellflowers. You can have tall bellflowers, you can have short bellflowers like this blue waterfall. And again, because of those bell-like shape or trumpet shape, they really do contain a lot of nectar um, where their proboscis can go right in and collect that. Other plants that we have here, check out the Wajilla. This is Red Prince Wajilla. Um, lots of different types of Wajilla out there, lots of different varieties. Dark color leaf, a light color leaf, green is, and so forth, but great tubular flower. And most of the Wajilla are gonna give you repeat blooming throughout the season. On the far side, you see this yellow. That is actually Sensation Honeysuckle. It is a fantastic honeysuckle non-invasive and it is scented so so beautifully but it is also a great tubular flower that they can come and get a lot of nectar in the background i'm going to move the coral bell flowers a little bit i have the nifophia sometimes this is called red hot poker it is a great perennial for real sunny dry areas and boy when they develop they really bloom and bloom and, and really provide a lot of nectar for the hummingbirds 
As well, I'm showing the Agastaki in the back. This is a beautiful orange. It's called Sunrise Orange. And this one is a great butterfly and hummingbird plant. A lot of these can kind of exchange as far as being good for the butterflies, good for the hummingbirds as well. The only thing that I've kind of missed in the background here is this real tall one back here and it's just starting to flower. This is Delphinium. Delphinium is a fantastic hummingbird plant. Comes in a lot of your blues and purples and white colors. Does need a little bit of protection, especially out in a windy garden. So plant it close to a fence, maybe a wall. Give it some staking so it stays upright for you, but great for the hummingbirds as well. And then this one that hasn't quite come out, this is also a native. This is Liatris or Gay Feather. And when it does bloom, it blooms a beautiful kind of fuzzy lavender. But again, a series of blooms that are excellent, very, very nectar rich. And so the hummingbirds will absolutely love it. So um, really hummingbird plants for the sun, for the shade, do get them out there. They'll really enjoy those tubular flowers or the trumpet shaped flowers. Lots of repeating blooms here. Also early, mid and late bloomers will help them out tremendously. And if you wanna stick a hummingbird feeder out there with a little bit of sugar water, that'll work as well. Enjoy.